It's Sunday night, 9 o'clock. Welcome to All Across Live. I've got Muffler Mike with me today. Uh, Sean is on location. I believe he's traveling on to Edmonton. Part of the Muffler Mike fan club routine and getting the parade route all set up. Got more tractors, got more people, got more things going on. So kudos to Sean for taking on this great project to get the Muffler Mike thing off the ground again. What a campaign. <laughs> Mike, how you doing? I'm doing good. What a great week, eh? How about that? Uh, that depends. It's relative. <laughs> Talking about pickums, not so much. But uh, as they say, how about those pickums? <laughs> just, uh, just putting that out there. By the way, yours truly had a, had a spectacular week in which, uh, well, well, we'll let you in on it a little bit later. <laughs> and I'm sure, as I look here, yes, we have got Eduardo with us. Eduardo, how are you? I believe coming from Jacksonville today, Eduardo. World traveler, you know, Eduardo. Nice. Oh, wait a second. St. Augustine, Florida. All right. All right. Me not being one with an atlas, uh, I'm assuming that's close. <laughs> I'm Canadian, man. What do you want? <laughs> well, looks like this much on the map must be close, right? Meanwhile, it's uh, Dallas to, uh, you know, Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> what do I know? Anyways. We got a great show for you. Just let me get a few things of the network out of the way and then we'll get rolling. Uh, just remember that all the uh, episodes are streamed live across Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and also Twitch. And you can catch all the action on EOPsports.com. Remember to hit the subscribe, follow, and like buttons and always share with your friends and your non friends and people down the street and everybody else. As you can see, we have many shows. Please check them out. Please check, please check out the entire lineup. My favorite, of course, as I've always said, is the Friday Night Steel Step Show with our Philly correspondent, Pat Bernard. Just an awesome show. Gotta love your wrestling. Uh, if you missed the show, no worries. You can grab all the podcasts and all the major podcasting companies, which include Amazon, iTunes, Google Play, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, and so much more. You can also catch all of the lineup on the EOP YouTube page at EOP Sports. Or if you're looking for our stuff in particular, you can go the all across all the time YouTube page and catch our entire library, as well as retro games, interviews, press conferences, uh, fights, and anything else you can think of is really starting to you know become a well-rounded page. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell everybody, please have a look at it. And while you're there, please subscribe to it. Remember, you can stay up to date with all sports by visiting eopsports.com. With great articles from our huge staff of contributors. While you're there, please subscribe to our newsletter. Well, I can use the salting myself. <laughs> Gosh darn. I'm missing that beer, man. <laughs> Been a week removed, you know, and I'm just a, uh, you know, a little bit. Uh, if you happen to be in the San Diego area and, uh, you know, want to send a care package, you know, I'm willing to accept. <laughs> you can get it over the border by all means, please. Anyways, a few things just to, to uh, remind you of. On April the 6th in Rochester is the third annual Bats Invitational at the Blue Cross Arena. Doors open at 12.30. Face-off is at 1. This time around, it's the uh, Lax 9 North American Invitational Champion uh, against the Rochester Bats. Uh, admission is free with your Nighthawks ticket for the evening game against the Riptide. And as you'll find out, this will be a pretty interesting game too. So... Uh, I would uh, check it out. And if you need more information, go to the Instagram Rochester Bats page. Mike Cooper's got a great thing set up there. Also, uh, it's almost summer now. We've already hit daylight savings uh, time. So we got to talk about summer stuff. And we got to save that date of July 6th over at the Rock Athletic Center. You have the third annual uh, Rob McDougal uh, Memorial Classic. You have the Junior A game at 3 p.m., the Celebrity game at 6 p.m. Uh, awesome. The names that are in that Celebrity game from year to year is just astoundingly amazing. The game itself is a lot of fun and a lot of talent, and they have a great time doing it. The Silent Auction, I was able to pick up some great stuff last year, uh, which include a Brian Cole jersey. So there's all kinds of stuff over there, um, as well as uh, Beer Garden and Live Music. Hey, maybe there'll be some salties over there. No Turf Monster, though. <laughs> Maybe a little bit rock, rock, relax, beer, or whatever it is. <clears throat> but uh, you're going to want to check that out anyways. It's a lot of fun. It's not expensive, and you won't want to miss it as a lacrosse fan if you're anywhere in the GTA. 
A uh, few changes coming up. <clears throat> uh, if you take a look at our site, you will see that uh, I have uh, posted uh, stuff from the uh, Canadian University's Field Lacrosse Association. The Back of the Way Cup weekend now is going to change, um, whereas it's uh, not a given for the team that's hosting anymore and a number of other changes. So uh, there will be a, another article put up about it uh, from me this week. But there's already something up there with the uh, the few changes uh, that have come with this. And uh, it's going to be great. It's going to be a lot of uh, different things going on. There's going to be more uh, media coverage. There's going to be more um, television or um, social media coverage to get these games out as well. Um, both Scott Fox, um, who is the new commissioner, and the assistant commissioner, who I've had uh, a number of talks with, Tom Bolesky, are really passionate about this and are doing some fantastic work moving this forward and using that so-called Rolodex to get things going. And it's going to be a great year of Canadian University Field. And that's uh, almost at our uh, our footsteps. You know, we are about a week and a half away from spring. So it's just around the corner. Another thing you can take a look at on our Facebook page is the National Lacrosse League the other day uh, put forth their support uh, towards the Truth and Healing Commission on Indian Boarding School Policies Act. Um, it seeks to investigate the impact and ongoing effects of the U.S. Indian border uh, boarding school policies. Supporting this bipartisan legislation is another step in the league's deepening commitment to the heritage of our game. Uh, up on our page is the entire league statement. So if you want to take a look at that, please go to the All Across All the Time Facebook page and it was posted by me on Friday. So uh, it's not too far down to scroll. Pretty cool stuff, hey, Mike? Yes. Yes. Glad to see they're continuing yeah. yes. that initiative. There's, so, there can't be enough done to no. right the wrongs and uh, to try and get a little bit of closure and move forward whilst learning. Uh, yes. I'm dead. If you know me well enough, you know I'm dead set against this cancel culture that we're in the middle of. Uh, I believe that we need to all the histories. We need to take it and learn from it so that we don't repeat it. Um, I see a lot of mistakes made because we've buried things and we're doing the same dumb stuff again. So let's make sure that we don't mess this up. Let's learn. Let's get things straightened away. And with the league putting this to the forefront and with a number of initiatives, uh, I think it's a long time in coming. And finally, we're, we're in the right direction. And let's keep it going that way. And momentum from everybody, which includes all of you at home, uh, is only going to help get this thing rolling in the right direction continuously. Absolutely. Alrighty, uh, Reno Lacrosse League. We uh, had some interesting stuff this week. Um, the power rankings have changed quite a bit. Um, just a few uh, highlights of scores. Uh, first of all, um, Brampton and Oshawa played a, uh, a slobber knocker over yesterday afternoon at the Children's Arena in Oshawa. And Brampton, who has been hot of late, came away with the 18-13 to 13 win. And they never really were behind in this game uh, and just kept rolling. Oshawa, to their, uh, to their credit, had a so-so uh, first half, but really put it together in the second half, <clears throat> giving Brampton a run for their money. This is going to be a great playoff. It's going to be one of the best playoffs uh, in a couple of weeks' time that I've seen in a long time, uh, since probably year one or two, uh, with the uh, just these these teams are so close, and uh, it's anybody's ball game. But this was uh, an 18-13 win for Brampton. Uh, your three stars was Pant Eistrat from the Express with five goals and two assists. Gage Board also from the Express with four assists, being a good playmaker, and Colin Matthews also from the Express. Uh, as the three stars in this game. The evening game at the Children's Arena last night had the former one and twos, uh, was the uh, Paris River Wolves against the Whitby Steelhawks. Uh, my, how the mighty have fallen, Mike. Paris <laughs> is having a little bit of a rough time lately. Uh, they've lost three in a row now. Uh, Whitby, uh, and when you look at the uh, the talent on this team, uh, beat them 21 to 14 in an absolute slugfest last evening. Uh your, uh, your friend Curtis Conley is now playing with Whitby. He had a couple of goals with Whitby yesterday. Excellent. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, led by Nikolai uh, Forrest, uh, who was the third star. Um, 
Jordan Sturris, a uh, very familiar name, uh, was the first star, a goal and three assists for Whippy. Noah Simonelli, who was always big for Paris, three goals and four assists for Paris. And I guess say Nikolai Ferris with four goals and two assists uh, for the uh, Steelhawks. Um, just to, I said how, how deep a lineup it is. And just to prove my point, um, Luke Keenan, Curtis Conley, Jordan Sturros, Colton Lidstone, Devin Pfeiffer, Nikolai Ferris, Adam Peroni, Tyler Goodchild. It's a heck of a lineup. That's a, uh, an NLL caliber lineup right there. Yeah. You know, I knew those guys could, could get signed. <laughs> you know, right Martin, now, Lucas to a team. Net. So. And, uh, you know, you have NLL goalies as well. So that's an, it's just a scary good team. Uh, speaking of teams that are on the upswing, uh, this afternoon the Toronto Monarchs face the Oswegan Bears. And the Monarchs, who uh, now have won uh, a couple in a row uh, and are starting to move back up the power rankings, uh, beat the Bears 18-8. to Now the Bears, man, they start out hot, man. They start out with two wins, and they haven't won since, I don't think. Uh, I believe it's 10 losses in a row now. And uh, just a, a real rough afternoon for them. Uh, in goal for Toronto is a familiar name again. Craig Wendy had a great day. Um, just gave up eight on the day. Um, I really think he's making a move to try and get back to the NLL. I believe he gets, needs another shot there. Um, I think uh, all other things and all the distractions are away now. So a focus Craig Wendy is an asset to any NLL team. And we've seen a number of NLL teams that could use that. So I'm hoping that somebody can uh, open their eyes and say, yeah, he needs another opportunity up there. And you're not going to find a better team guy than him. So uh, three stars, Patrick Thompson for the Monarchs, three goals and two assists. Craig Wendy was the second star, uh, which is eight goals against. And Jordan Dance of the Monarchs, four goals and one assist, was the number three star. Um, it was ugly early, and it coasted on from there. Uh, the Monarchs, I believe, got out to a 7-1 lead in this one in the first. It was 8-3 after one. Uh, throw at a 6 nothing third quarter for the Monarchs out of the dressing rooms, and this game was uh, was over long before the fourth ever showed up. So I'm hoping Oswegan finds their uh, the, uh, the N because they've been going towards the S for a while now. So let's hope they uh, they got a couple of weeks left in this season, and let's hope they uh, get a couple of decent weeks going forward. Speaking of decent weeks, our last game of the day was the late game this afternoon at the ILA, and it was the Peterborough Timmerman against the Six Nations Snipers. And we all know Six Nations had a real tough time getting their first win of the year. But since then, they've rhymed off a couple of wins. Um, and, uh, well, they uh, they beat Peter Peterborough pretty uh, pretty handily. It was 23-13 to 13 for the Snipers uh, this afternoon. Uh, ironically, uh, they were uh, tied record-wise because Peterborough's had a rough time of late, losing five in a row now. Um, and, uh, well, uh, this was another one that was uh, – it was a fairly decent first half. You know, it was 10-6 uh, going into the dressing room. The Where Peterborough ran out of gas was in the fourth. <clears throat> it was 6-1 uh, to one for Six Nations in the fourth, and uh, that's all she wrote. Wes Whitlow was the number one star for Six Nations, five goals, seven assists. Uh, Jason Gasparetti for Peterborough, three goals and an assist. Uh, Mitch Zulian for Six Nations, two goals and five assists as the number three star. So if we're looking at the uh, the standings, Whitby, of course, is in first place by a long shot. Now they are just killing it at 12-1. and one. Uh, Brampton is now... In second place, uh, just uh, uh, through tie breaks ahead of Oshawa, both with eight and five records. Uh, Paris is sitting in fourth at a seven and six record. The Monarchs are on their tail at a six and seven record. Peterborough has dropped to five and seven in sixth. Six Nations at three and nine, and Oswegan at two and eleven. Our uh, our power rankings have Whitby in number one, who've won eight in a row. Brampton now have won seven straight and are in second. The Oshawa Outlaws, who have dropped two big ones in the last couple of weeks, including the one to Brampton, are sitting in third. The Toronto Monarchs, who have now won a couple in a row, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, are in fourth. 
Paris, who've lost three in a row, are in fifth. Six Nations, who beat Peterborough, are now ahead of Peterborough in the power rankings. Uh, it's sixth. Peterborough moves to seventh, losing five straight now. And the Oswegan Bears, who have lost 10 in a row, are sitting in eighth. Uh, a couple of games upcoming this week in the, the West. Uh, you have the Sea Spray against the Eagles Tuesday night at 7 Pacific. And you have the Grizzlies against the Blackfish on Wednesday uh, at 7 p.m. Pacific as well. Next weekend, you have on the Friday night game, the Brampton Express against the Whitby Steelhawks. This one is going to be a big one. Um, worth the time, worth the effort to make it to Children's Arena Friday evening in a rare game in Oshawa. Normally these games Friday are in Brampton. This one is at the Children's Arena in Oshawa, 8 p.m. start Friday, March the 15th. Uh, if you want to make it to uh, Saturday, both games are at the Children's Arena in Oshawa as well. You have Oswegan against Peterborough in the early game, the 2 p.m. game. But the one I have circled that I am going to be at, uh, the Rocker in Buffalo, and I believe instead of going to Buffalo, I might go to Oshawa. That's how big a game this is. The Toronto Monarchs are going to be facing the Oshawa Outlaws. And um, look out, that should be a barn burner. 7 p.m. at the Children's Arena, Oshawa. Sunday afternoon at 2 p.m., you have the Snipers against the River Wolves. And that's not a gimme. A few weeks ago, I would have thought it might be, but I think that's anybody's ball game also. So if you happen to be in the Oswegan, uh, sorry, or in the Hagersville area, uh, you're going to want to get to the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena 2 p.m. Sunday for that game. Again, very inexpensive. NLL caliber games, NLL rules, NLL caliber coaching, and a lot of these guys are making it to the NLL rosters, if not now, uh, in the next year or so. So it's very much worth your time and effort to support these guys and this league. And uh, who knows who you may see? Maybe me. <laughs> All righty. Let's, uh, let's move on to some uh, movement in the NLL, Mike. First of all, some players of the week from last week. Uh, no surprise, the player of the week was Nick Rose. Two exceptional games on the West Coast. Two wins, 65 saves in the two victories. Uh, he had another big one this week, holding the team to under nine goals again. Uh, his goals against average, I believe, is under nine now. Just astounding. Like, if he's not in the conversation for goaltender of the year again, uh, maybe this year he can actually walk away with the hardware because uh, I've been a proponent that he's deserved it the last two years and uh, uh, in essence have been robbed. But um, I don't see anybody close to catching him in these numbers or in these games. And you take a look, you brought up a great point earlier when we were talking off air <clears throat> of the goalies he's beaten and the teams he's beaten. And there's just nobody that can compare records so i'm hoping that uh, everybody gets their heads out of the sand and uh let's leave playoffs where playoffs have been uh who knows uh they're looking pretty sharp this year and uh who knows maybe this is the year that they uh that ho that trophy gets hoisted you know anything's possible that's the beauty of watching the games guys <laughs> yep thomas mcconvey was the rookie of the week and he had a stellar game uh in the rochester victory last sunday with a sock trick he had another really good game last night, but we'll get to that in a few minutes. Uh, a few signings. Colorado signed, as we're talking about ALL players, Parker Pfeiffer um, to a one-year deal. The big one here of the week, I believe, is a Connor Farrell two-year deal with Buffalo. He made an immediate impact, uh, winning 90% of the face-offs uh, in the game there on Friday. Um, and I imagine had a little to do with Buffalo putting a W up in overtime, you know, one of those face-offs. But um, it was a big signing. I'm surprised he wasn't signed by somebody beforehand, but, you know, kudos to uh, Chugger for uh, seeing it, seeing the need, grabbing him. Because uh, obviously Max Handler isn't coming back this year. Alex Simmons, who's made a lot of news in the NLL this year, uh, he is signed with the California Redwoods of the PLL, and uh, big news. Big news. They just bolstered even more. 
So that's coming up, Mike. Just yeah. around the corner, you know. Yeah. Here we are in spring. Mind you, it was minus two today here. How much very spring weather here today? <laughs> we got weather by Sybil, man. We're 60 degrees one day. We're 22 degrees the next day. We're 72 degrees the next day. It's no wonder nobody knows up from down. And now you got the time shifting and daylight when there's nighttime and night when there's daylight. And everybody's walking around just kind of just go into a box, you know, box lacrosse. Man. We have lights, you know, you don't just see outside. <laughs> like a casino, we don't put windows or clocks in there. Climate yeah. control, too. That's it. You know, you just lose yourself <laughs> in there. You know, it doesn't matter if it's summer, winter, spring, fall, you know, indoors. It's where it's at. Dave is with us, man. How are you, Dave? Hey, Thank Dave, you for, nice uh, in. Thanks for coming in. Awesome. If you hang out for a little bit, Pat will be joining us. Oh, probably yeah. closer to the 10 o'clock hour. Oh, but he, can, uh, he can't wait. He's, uh, he's a little puckered <laughs> out. You know, they, he had a long afternoon over at the uh, Wells Fargo Center today. <clears throat> they went into overtime as well. And we're going to keep you on the hook on that one. All I know is that Mike had a rough week. He lost three overtime games. So if you want to look at our pick you can see. It's usually me. I'm usually the one on the wrong side of the overtime losses. So, you know, I can relate. But I'm happy it's you for a change. Yeah, not this week. <laughs> not this week. This week, uh, I did I did okay. I even had okay on my Bet365 card because I followed my advice. Um, a few uh, milestones. Matt Vince, with a great game on Friday night, is now the all-time save leader for the Buffalo Bandits. Congratulations, Vino. Just another in his list of accomplishments for his Hall of Fame career. TJ Camizio with 300 loose balls in his short career. He's moving up the charts very fast, isn't he? Yep. Big one here, Shane Jackson, 500 career assists. <clears throat> I don't know if anybody had checked out my uh, my other show on Thursday, but I had John Arlotta, the uh, owner and general manager of the Georgia Swarm, on there, and he was quite candid, really worth uh, worth listening to. Um, he, uh, he was talking about... Uh, the beginnings in there, and one of, one of the guys who made the move over was Shane Jackson. Um, he talked about everything. His Notre Dame years, he talked about the Arlotta Stadium there and the endowment. He talked about buying Minnesota and then eventually the move and building it from nothing and no programs and, you know, slowly things. And, the, you know, the, the headaches they have that they didn't have in Minnesota where they had box places to play and set up programs where there's only a few in Georgia and they have to work around that. Yeah, my just San Diego's found a way around that with outdoor boxes. So just a thought. Yep. Just a thought. It works well. They have some beautiful ones out there too. And if anything else fails, you know, you can always play on top of an aircraft carrier. <laughs> Anyways, let's keep moving along here. Dan Craig of the Toronto Rock in his first game back and now is up to 300 points. Congratulations, Dan. And boy, oh boy, it was good to see him in the Toronto lineup. That just rounds out that already potent lineup. And it gave uh, Dan Lintner the ability to roam inside, which uh, warmed my heart because you know me. I love the outside shooting. <laughs> and I saw a lot of it for a while there last night, and even though they were scoring from the inside. And then they went, wait a minute. We were scoring from the inside. Hence came the fourth quarter. And then they went inside again. And then you'll see that they uh, scored again. And again, and again. And, of course, Nick Rose with his weekly milestone. He is now fifth all-time in saves as an NLL goaltender with 6,357. And he passes Dallas Eliak for fifth. That is pretty exceptional company. So all of you rosy bashers, um, you can't take it away from the guy. Um, the numbers are there. All the numbers are there. He needs to be goaltender of the year this year. And not just because I'm a Toronto-based Toronto fan. The numbers speak for themselves. So I'll get off my soapbox now, Mike. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, we, uh, we appreciate your time with us. Thank you very much. We're doing well. We hope you're doing the same. Uh, Dave on Pat being here later. 
<laughs> my God, Pat must be bruised by the end of an episode. I'm telling you, uh, gotta be bruised. Uh, by the way, I actually had a much, much easier time getting in today. Notice I don't have a coat on today. I, I didn't have to fly in from anywhere. I, uh, I have been here comfortably trying to warm up because I was out in that deep freeze. It snowed this morning in here. I haven't seen, didn't see snow in February, but it snowed this morning. Oh, jeez. Now it didn't stay, of course. There was flurries, but still, when I got out early this morning, uh, taking my wife to work, and uh, so what is this? Is nuclear fallout or what? <laughs> yeah. Been in California too long. You know, I spent uh, almost three days there. <laughs> I for <laughs> forgot what snow looked like. Anyways, let's get into some of these um, some of these games. We're going to do things a little bit different this week. Um, we're going to actually show you the highlights first and then wrap about the games. First of all, on the docket, we have the <clears throat> aforementioned Buffalo against Saskatchewan game in which Byrne Smith, Nanakoke, and Kluche each had hat-tricks in the overtime win. Church had a sock trick in the loss. Now, Mike, again, we're talking about sock tricks. We're going to talk about that a few times today. Um, wow. You know, from uh, this being a, a, a fringe thing to this being every week and not just one, three or four of them a week. That's pretty amazing that people are telling me the scoring is uh, going down in the league. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't understand that 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 mentality and, and that concern. Um, well, they're obviously not watching all the games, that's for sure. Um, God knows I uh, watch a lot of these things. And, uh, man, I really enjoy it. And you know what? I find them to be more exciting than a couple of years ago. Most of them are cliffhangers yeah. for the longest point. And even if they may not be 20 to 17 – uh, slobber knockers, um, giving me a, a you know 11 10 overtime one, um, something like a game like today, which I was on the edge of my seat, even though there was no scoring for a good chunk of the first half. Um, it wasn't that there wasn't any shots, it wasn't that there wasn't any action, it's just showing you just how good, how far the defenses and the goalies have come on either side throughout yeah. the league. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think that that's any concern. All right, let's uh, let's show the uh, the highlights first from the uh, from the Buffalo Sass game, and uh, we'll uh, we'll jump on it from there. Forty pounds who moves some players out of the way, and here comes from the side they score. Saskatchewan on the board, eight percent, and Dane Smith takes a shot and scores. The great thing. Dashing in by the left side over to Natakoke, back over to Smith. Smith. Finds an opening to a running Josh Byrne. He scores! Rush down into the bandit zone. Score tied at three here in the second. A break now for Saskatchewan, and they score. He's got to get back to it, looking for the dribbling ball. He's got control of it. The webbing of his stick back over to Smith. The King Smith for the shot. He scores! There were some things that could be implemented pregame and some adjustments during the game, but still letting his coaches help him. And there's a nice goal there by the rush. Wow, what a goal by Robert Church. Zone to Josh Byrne. Byrne now moves to the top of the slot. Feed pass over to Cluche. Cluche with a shot. Scores! Wheeling it back. We have a player that's down. And slow in getting up as Blake continues. A diving shot from behind the net. And it's held off. And Justin Smith to Fraser. Fraser now to Cluche. Cluche into traffic. Goes to his opposite side. Swim move over the shoulder. Between the legs. He scores. Over to Bird, who finds a running. There's a shot. Score. of the rush. Byrne leaving it to Fraser. Now to Smith. In front, a shot, score! Buffalo! Across the Buffalo restraining line. Saskatchewan from the top of the slot. Leaving it to Dodds. There's a front shot by Church. He scores! And Saskatchewan mounts another attack down into the Buffalo zone, led by Triolo. Into traffic. A shot oh. score, Keenan. And the rush take on the offense side to get some rhythm. 
And across the line is Smith now to McKay with a drive. He scores! Dodds is there from the left wing side. Comes in close. One arms. The pass out in front to Church. Deeks away at the pressure. And the ball is left for Dodds again. He scores! 25 seconds left to play into the third quarter. 11-10. Rush. Pass out in front is Fuche scores! <laughs> with Smith, one-two punch on this man advantage. Now Smith from Bird. Smith with a nice move, Smith scores! <laughs> Mans, he takes the shot just over the right side of Matt Vince. Rebound with four seconds left on the shot clock, they score! in regulation. Buffalo attacking down into the Saskatchewan zone. Manicoke with three, looking for four. Leaves it back for a run. Burn the shot. He scores! Resetting the shot clock. Burn with composure. And the ball. Top of the slot. Leaving it back. Quick stake. Score! Heck of a game. A couple things stand out to me. First of all, Marvel Comic Night weren't those sweet Bandit jerseys. Yes. Those have been my favorite of, of all of them so far. That just was great. I thought it was done beautifully. Um, a couple of things in this game that stood out to me. Number one, um, we're talking about Matt Vinch just coming back from injury and maybe looking a little rusty. Um, he faced 61 shots, guys. He faced 61 shots. Uh, they got the victory. You know, yes, 15, uh, 14 went in, but, uh, that's a lot of rubber, especially in your first game back. Um, the other one is, of course, Connor Farrell winning 27 of 33 face-offs. So was it a good signing? I, I think it was. Now, the other thing that stood out to me is this game. We're, we talk about back and forth, and we use that term a lot. Um, there was no two-goal lead in this game. There were 14 ties in this game. Talk about... An even game. You want a game that's going to keep you on the edge of your seat? This I found to be one of the most entertaining games I watched of the weekend. You know, and I watched a lot of games this weekend. And I found this to be in my top three of the eight games in the NLL. And, you know, talking ALL as well. Um, really, really an exceptionally played game on both sides. Uh, if we take a look, uh, Robert Church, of course, with a sock trick. Uh, Tohoka Nanakoke. Four goals, including the uh, the overtime winner with a quick stick. And just how dangerous uh, he can be. Good to see him healthy again. Another name that uh, we've talked about and wondered where he'd been all year, Patrick Dodds is starting to get his feet under him, eh? Yeah. What do you think, Mike? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, yeah. I was just going to say, you know, uh, just – Bouncing back to the Buffalo thing, uh, I'm I'm still a little concerned. Yeah, you, yeah, you won. Yeah, you're at 500. Uh, you still have two difficult home games left. Yeah, next week is going to be a big one against Toronto. Yeah, and and you know, because I I, <laughs> I I I hate sounding like I'm I'm always so biased against them or skeptical of them, but you know. Fans have been screaming for a face-off guy. You got a face-off guy. He excelled this weekend. Fans have been wondering where the power play went. The power play was on fire this weekend. Fans have been saying, you got to change something up. The offense is the same all the time. You know, they pretty much played Dane Smith in transition the entire game. They also moved him into Josh Burns' slot in the center of the floor. And that's why you're starting to see Dane Smith score again. The only reason they moved him the first time was because he was snake bit early on in the year and switched it and burn really excelled in that spot. Yeah. So, I mean, you have all that plus Matt Vince coming back and you still needed to go to overtime to beat Saskatchewan. Who's, you know, uh, you know, I'm not, you know, they're, they're no slouches, but you know, they're, they're, they're fighting. Right now, you know, just to yeah, just to get in the playoffs. fit into the playoffs. 
So, and, and this is a week after losing to Vancouver. And yet he's correct. Matty has so, uh, is missed, uh, as you can see, three games he missed, they lost all three. Um, and neither goalie looked good uh, in in those things. So uh, the team goes as Vince goes. But, um, you know, he's not going to play until he's 60, guys. You know, there has to be contingency plans in there. If uh, Shanahan, Orleman aren't the ones for it, they need to start looking. And uh, uh, I believe I mentioned a guy over in the uh, ALL who's really working hard and uh, trying to get back. Never mind. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's not part of the Muffler Mike uh, fan club parade, but maybe the Craig Wendy parade can start to, you know, moving through Toronto here anyways. He's not far off in Kitchener, so he's pretty close to the Buffalo area, guys. It yeah. wouldn't be a stretch for him to make it over there. Yeah. So just putting that out there. But, yeah, um, Buffalo's power play, you mentioned, they went three for three. Uh, you know, note to self, don't take penalties against Buffalo. Don't retaliate. You know, they love getting under your skin, so you take dumb penalties because they have that power play that's just lights out. And, you know, Guys like Josh Burns, seven assists. Well, now you see it, right? Smith and him switched, and Smith scoring, and now Burn is picking up record assists here, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, but you know, just to uh, <clears throat> bounce back to, to what you were asking about Saskatchewan. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, it, it 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 is nice to see uh, Patrick Dodds starting to uh, starting to pick up his game again. You know, to to where it was. You know, yeah. when he was with Panther City. Uh, you know, it's also the- good to see Ryan Keenan come back to life there with three goals and four assists. Um, Absolutely, him in for the majority of that offense over on Friday night. Absolutely, you know, and, and he's the captain, so you know, uh, you know, step stepping up and leading, and you know that that the defense is the defense is young, so as much as you might have some doubts now, or not be happy with their performance. You know, this is a unit that's going to be together for a while. So Mm -hmm. they're going to grow. They're going to, you know, get that chemistry down. And and pretty soon, you know, it's going to be similar to (laughs) what fans were seeing in, you know, 15, 16, 17, 18, you know, when they won three championships in four years. So, Right. Now, look out. We were talking about how the offense needs to spread out in Buffalo, right? And we can't just keep relying on one or two guys. Nanako had four goals. Kluche had three goals. McKay had a goal in transition. Byrne had a great night with four goals, seven assists. Smith with three goals, seven assists. You know, so you're getting it from everybody. Fraser chipped in with three assists himself. So everybody was getting involved in play. So if they're going to start getting uh, everybody in there, they become a scary team again. It's whether their defense can hold up and whether Vince can hold up um, or whether he's got all the rush shaken off. Because they say next week is going to be a big test. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. And it's also to work for the tie break because Buffalo came in and stole a game in Toronto, 16-14. So Toronto needs to win by three to, uh, you know, get that tie break back. So a lot of, uh, a lot of things, uh, side play on all this, but that was our first game of the day of the weekend. Um, we move over to the Georgia Calgary game next. And as we can see here, you know, I, I said it in my pickums that Andrew Q is going to have a big night, three goals and three assists <clears throat> overtime win over the roughnecks. Pace uh, scores five in a loss. He's been on fire. Tyler Pace has really, really had a great year so far. But let's take a look at the highlights, and then we'll get back with uh, with our opinions. Yeah, Chris, Lyle Thompson told me yesterday that he has seen Zach Miller take huge steps from week one. I'll let you take that one, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can finish this in a minute. It was off the board. Better hurry. Left-handed ripper, Dobson, it was on top of Dobson. He made the save, and then the scoop on the rebound is put in. Is that, is that really going to happen? Apparently. I just thought that was a bunch of conjecture. Something to get people cooked up. Speaking of getting cooked up, Seth Oaks. Type shot there. 
Sidewinder with no force, however, and it's picked up by Kaysen Tarbell. Oh, oh, an intercepted pass, and then it's thrown into the net. Holy smokes. He's got that lip curl up there. He's got the, oh my, oh baby. The penalty killed off. Henrik comes out. George will slowly start to get the offense going. That'll help. Clock and cue, the magician right there almost made something from nothing. Oh, speaking of making something from nothing. An absolute, absolute laser beam. Pass was knocked away, and Calgary comes away with it, and they'll push. Eli Salama, fresh off the IR. She now is four. So for whatever reason, he went from five to four, so he still needs two. To the dunk. Oh, baby. There's a score tonight, and we've also seen both defenses, who can be very good at times, be very good tonight and look at that again from behind the goal getting to the latter stages they struggled in this regard mount shot in josh courier justin i think it has to be yeah I, you know they're human beings they're great phenomenal athletes oh my oh lyle someone make sure the life like the little worms and the grubs and things like that are by Del Bianco. Uh oh. There it is. The connection looks for the tie and has it. Calgary score. As Jesse King. No, not Jesse King. They got it wrong on the scorecard here. I'll get it right. It's Jeff Conwall, who's in the box, and the official call is cross checking. Short handed now. Behind the back. Oh, and it's in. It's in. Un by Bomberry. Eight on the shot clock. He'll drive in, send one in the middle. Thompson loses the handle. Q picks it up, shoots and scores! 12 on the shot clock. Try for the dunk, yes, 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 yes! And there you have it, the overtime victory for Georgia. You know what's really heartwarming, Mike, just before we get in the game? You know, it's all the people. Yes. That fan base is big. And I talk with her a lot about that, too, and their patience and, you know, growing it and marketing to the kids. Because if you grow, if, if you market the biggest party in town, you sell one, a one ticket to an adult. If you market to the kids, first off, you get a long-term fan base. But secondly, you get the mom and dad, uncle and aunt, grandfather, dad, grandmother. Yep brothers and sisters and you build out and that's what they've done and it's got to get there somehow right <laughs> kudos kudos that this is starting to catch fire in georgia yeah well i was gonna say one of the first things i just in watching that highlight package uh you were just talking about how much you despise uh uh toronto kind of relying on that outside shot and about two-thirds of those highlight goals were shots mm -hmm. from you know way outside i mean Geez, one of Q's, I think, was from the airport in Atlanta. Yes. <laughs> it works sometimes, but more times than not, you're firing at that bullseye we call a logo, and uh, that doesn't work. You know, you know, you start getting Class A goalies like Brett Dobbs, and you get Class A goalies like Matt Vince, Nick Rose. Those things aren't going in. Right. Anyways, hey, how you doing, Brian? Thank you for being with us. Brian. I know you had a rough afternoon. Hopefully you had a good time at the Wells Fargo Center. Oh, anyways. Yeah, so uh, you know, Georgia, Georgia wins this one in overtime, and uh, one of the things you didn't see was uh, uh, this nearly went the other way in overtime. Uh, not too long before Zach Miller's dunk to win it, uh, Tanner Cook had a crease dive that the shot bounced off Brett Dobson, then bounced off Cook's helmet and into the net. <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, he hit the crease before the ball crossed the line, so the ball was disallowed. But uh, that would have been uh, quite the interesting quite the interesting way to finish off Absolutely, time win. Absolutely. But, uh, Looking at the like numbers said, of this game, um, you know, shots for Georgia, a little bit ahead, 58-51. Uh, Face-offs almost even at 15-14 for Georgia. 
power plays both were kind of mm, so so one for two for Calgary one for three for Georgia so really there's nothing that really stands out to me as being exceptional but then you start looking at guys like Tyler Pace who just had great games and put uh, put Calgary on his back without him you know where are they pretty much yeah five five goals and an assist uh Tanner Cook had a pair of, of his own uh Jesse King, uh, a goal and four assists, but uh, he, he's he's had a bit of a rough season. You know, he's some games he's he's some games he's on, some games he's kind of just not putting up the numbers that 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 you he is able to find a post when there is no post. He has hit more posts. Than I, I wish there was a stat for it than anybody I can possibly think of this season. You know. You almost want to call him oh, Jesse King. <laughs> Who are the league leaders in hit posts? <laughs> oh, I gotta say Jesse Ding King, and here we are. Because man, I'm telling you, every game is at least two or three that he's clanking off of the the crossbar or the post. You know, quarter inch one way. You know, and in all of a sudden he's got an extra 15 goals in the year. Right. Uh, I guess there's one thing that, that does stand out and not in a good way. Uh, Hayden Dixon just off the scoreboard completely for the yeah. night. So um, tough game for him. But, right. uh, but you know, okay. Calgary, I think, I want to say they have a fairly favorable schedule going forward. I mean, they're five and seven. So right now they're outside, just outside the playoff window. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's a little rough. They've got uh, they've got San Diego, they've got Albany, then they have a home and home with Saskatchewan. That that'll be big. And that'll have, be for the playoffs. Very, quite One quite of those hard. teams isn't going. That'll be for the playoffs. Then they have this will be rough at Buffalo, and then home against Panther City to finish. That's a tough schedule. So so they don't have it. They don't have it as easy as I as I thought they did, but uh, right. it's good to have Eli Salama back. It was nice to see him in the lineup. He had a goal and assist and four loose balls. Um, they've really missed him. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I think at this point they they just need to keep running, and you know, it's as difficult as it is to rely on transition goals as part of your offense. It's really going to need him, Shane Simpson, Icehurst. Jeff Cornwall to, to, to keep keep producing. <laughs> right. On the other side, though, you know, when you, when you have a guy like Lyle Thompson, <clears throat> excuse me, who isn't having the biggest of nights, two goals, two assists, which by Lyle Thompson standards is kind of subpar, then you have uh, somebody like an Andrew Q who's going to pick up the reins with three goals and three assists. Zach Miller, who's going to have three goals and an assist in there as well. Seth Oaks, who's been steady all year. And then the big one, when Shane Jackson isn't scoring, seven assists, which helped yeah. get him to his milestone of 500. But, you know, you have other guys, next guy up mentality. Um, Jeremy Thompson with 11 loose balls uh, in the process. Brett Dobson being solid in net. You know, the ones that beat him, yeah. were, were there weren't any cheapies that really went on him. So, you know. yeah. John ran again, three cause turnovers as well. So yeah. that's uh, that's always big help on the yeah. back end. And again, you know, this was the first of a five game homestand to finish the season for Georgia. So um, to get a win, obviously, is huge. Um, uh, helps them out even more, as we'll see a little later when we talk about Halifax and San Diego. They leapfrog a spot into fourth place in the standings right now, which means a home game for playoffs. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> so it'll not be, to be a broken yeah, so, so it'd be, no, it'd be nice to not have to leave home now for a month and a half, maybe more. Sure. And not to be a broken record, but you know, over the next four games coming, I'm curious about the fan base. If there's this much there and now when it's been sporadically at home, when they can build momentum week to week to week and really market it one week to the next to the next. And these guys can get excited and tell their friends about it. Um, let's take a look and see what the attendance numbers will be by the end of the season heading into playoffs, which really, you know, that's exactly what you want. Yeah. Yeah. They get that home playoff game and yeah. And then uh, so, actually have a home field advantage in. for the first time since they've moved from Minnesota. So 
quite you know, That's going to be spectacular. Yeah. All right, let's move forward. We got the Albany and Vancouver game as the last game on Friday night. Um, Albany continued to be hot in this thing. Um, 13 to 8, they beat Vancouver. Longboat scores four goals to lead the Firewolves to the fourth straight win. Second team in the NLL to hit 10 wins. <clears throat> big, big time. Let's take a look at the highlights and we'll come back and talk about it. Second quarter underway. Great to have you with us. Friday night, and Albany scores. Longboat squirts one by Walsh. To Walsh. That's the size of Vancouver's defense on display. Tchaikovsky, the steal, fire, scores! Ups on defensively overall. There has been more movement in the second. Darrell Gibson, the OC, must like it. And that time, that's all about Will to pump that goal in. LL.com and the league's social media channels. Cooper is like a mad scientist, the way he cranks out the numbers each and every week. <laughs> Acid, just not just for the Vancouver morale itself, but the landscape of the league as Ball whistles one in. Only a matter of time for Keegan Ball to get cooking. Second half is underway. 10 seconds for a fan to win wings for a year, and he does in the first 55 seconds. Circles back. 15 seconds remain in the five on four. Simmons dishes. Walker scores. Third time's a charm. Floor. Longboats up top. They've been mixing their patterns here with the extra man. A hat trick for Longboat. Are negative. They're a minus two in terms of goals, and from a shots perspective, they're a minus 16. So the the generation in quarter four has favored the opponent, and that's exactly Kowski in transition. Walker with a power play goal. Dan noted this earlier. Simmons has five assists. Lean it in and score. Nathan Grennan. Keegan Ball steps down and scores. Hat trick for Ball. Hit Branson. Has one goal tonight on the power play. Longboat comes around. Number four. Albany. And how fitting on Indigenous Celebration Night. Another goal for Albany. You blink and they add another tally. From now, the NLL trade deadline. So you go. All games available on ESPN Plus. A snipe. The delivery by Simmons. His first goal tonight. Fourth, maybe the biggest one in terms of keeping momentum for the home squad tonight. Yeah, that first goal of the fourth. There's Ball with his fourth of the evening. Charlotte Beatties is denied. Jameson airs it out. Watkinson. He's got time and he scores. And there it was. Now, it's easy to pile on Vancouver saying, yeah, it's another loss. I tend to look at the first quarter as a huge victory. You took a hot Albany team, and you took a goalie that is not a lot of seasoning in the NLL, and you held them scoreless. In fact, the entire game was scoreless through that first quarter. I, I was wondering if they were ever going to see a goal at one point because it was just so... Uh, defensively minded, both teams strong. That Vancouver defense really is huge and bruising. And uh, eventually there they found some cracks in it that they were able to score. But um, that's my positive take out of this because, yes, I can find a lot of negatives. I can find face-offs where Nardella went wild and went 123 of 25. I can find the power play that, you know, Albany went three for six and Albany doesn't have a very good power play and still made it three for six and Vancouver only had one opportunity and they made good on it. So uh, I, I can look at those things, uh, 22 penalty minutes to two, you know, I can look at all kinds of things. That are, so I'm prefer to look at the, the positives there and the Miloski style that is starting to show up more and more. It's three, two after one, after one half. Um, that's a pretty good, that's a win in my eyes against, yeah. you know, the number one, number two team in the league that has been that good all year. 
and put up that many goals all year. Yes, things are going to happen. But to their credit, you know, Albany did score seven times in the fourth. Vancouver did score five times in the fourth. So, you know, you had uh, numbers. Travis Longboat had a great night uh, for Albany with four goals. Keegan Ball had a great night for Vancouver with four goals. Charlemagne Beatty's had another big night with four assists. You know, Alex Simmons, of course, uh, he's uh, on pace uh, to be the guy, right? It's something about ahead of uh, Jeff Teed, yeah? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, I think he had, uh, well, he, what, he had 61 points, I believe, going into the weekend. So uh, I, I believe he's he's still on pace to uh, to break Jeff Teet's, uh rookie scoring record. Right. Now, what stands out to me here is penalty minutes. Jackson Subak, again, 12 minutes in penalties. Um, he's a good player. And I've, I've watched him since he was in Mimico. And, yes, he's a tough guy. And, yes, he's a big guy. But he needs to control it and pick his spots. It can't just be free-for-all because it's hurting the team. When you take a look at penalty minutes, and the leading penalty minute getter is Joey Nardella, who had two for the Albany Firewolves. Why do Albany keep winning? Because they don't take stupid penalties. And they don't put themselves in positions where they're not going to be able to cover themselves. So if they do that, you know, 16 out of 18 games, guess what? Uh, we're talking about the number one, number two seed with the other team that doesn't get a lot of penalties. Yeah, Funny how that works. <laughs> um, to take a look at uh, some, of the, uh, some of the big scores, I was impressed with Colton Watkinson. He had two goals and an assist. And one of the goals, of course, was into the semi-empty net where Aiden Walsh didn't quite make it back in time. But as a leader, uh, there's nothing he's not going to do. Uh, you need him to bang around, he's going to bang around. You need him to set picks, he's setting picks. You need him to score, he's scoring. As a leader, I've watched him mature. So have you, Mike, over yep. the years. Absolutely. And he is um, your perennial what a leader should be in this league. Yeah. Can't, can't argue with that. You know, and you know, the team goes as he goes. You know, you take a look. Alex Simmons didn't get a lot of goals. He only had one goal in this game, six assists. So all these guys are doing what it takes to get it done. Yeah. Finding other ways. And and just, <laughs> I mean, if anyone, if anyone is still doubting them, I mean, they, they're, they're just, <clears throat> there's no fear in yeah. this team at all. They're not, concerned about being in the spotlight they're you know I agree. Uh, you know yeah you <clears throat> yeah, definitely <throat> walker and and you know something yeah. i noticed something i've noticed just over the the course of the whole season with walker he is he is he is biggest for albany right off the initial face off and at the end of the game go and look at just about any albany box score you're going to find him scoring a goal almost right off the bat. Yeah. Somewhere in the first, say, five minutes of the game, almost every single game. And you're going to find him scoring the last five minutes of the game, almost every single game. Right. It's a nail in the coffin type goal or something to, you know, force overtime or, you know, tie up a game, go ahead goal. He shines biggest right at the start and right at the end of the game. Right. So I'm also really impressed with Nathan Grennan. Now I, I've mentioned this many times. Um, he was in the Brampton organization when I was on the board of director board of directors over there and really shined, especially in his last year junior when they had the, uh, the bubble tournament and he would do anything. You want grit, you want scoring, you want fighting, whatever you needed from him, he did. And that's translated now uh, first in Panther city, but now here, He's really found a home, and he fits into this Glenn Clark system beautifully. And he was everywhere, in your face, in front, setting picks, got a couple of goals in this game as well. And, you know, at a stage when it was 3-2, these are meaningful goals. You know, when you look at it as a five-goal win, not when these things happened. You know, there's a reason why these things piled in, because they're able to, you know, persevere. And bit by bit by bit by bit, they're uh, they're there to get the win. So, you know, kudos to Albany. Uh, they uh, they go to ten and ten and two in this at this point of the weekend. 
uh, looking very, very strong. Yep. All right, we're going to move over to our other top team. And now we're into Saturday. And the Colorado Mammoth uh, jaunt over to First Ontario Centre in Hamilton to face the Toronto Rock. And Dan Lindner leads the Rock with a hat trick. Rose makes 38 saves as the Rock win their fifth straight. Just a spectacular uh, game overall from both sides. Um, yes, uh, the Colorado offense is... Um, and just for one little thing, yes, you're right. He's doing a great job, both as coach and as GM. Um, I think he's he's a fantastic uh, person. He showed us uh, really colors last year when he had so many injuries and used it as a, a year to find other diamonds in the rough so that when everybody came back, he's got this, and you take a look what happened. And I wait till next year when you get Dyson Williams part of this and see how this all fits together. And yeah, it's very, yeah, very bright there. <laughs> Also mentioned Will Johansson. That too, yeah. You know, they were supposed to have him this year. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, emerging top defense, you know, gets another young stud. All right. Let's have a look at some of the highlights here of this Rock game. Um, very interesting game. Uh, very back and forth showing that this is a game of runs. She couldn't reel it in. Save, though. Still some time for Toronto. Into the middle. Lindner scores. Bullying. The competition, Lindner gives the Rock the lead. Here's Bushi. On to Tom Schreiber. Schreiber shoots. That sneaks through and Schreiber scores. A three-goal run to open for the Rock. And Connor Kelly tonight. Colorado, tail end of the power play. They make good. Nice look and finish from McLaughlin who get Colorado on the board. Oh, stopped by Ward, who read that with a left leg. In transition, Mammoth up the floor quickly, stopping at the top. Nice move by Garrison to Barry. What patience and precision from Tyler Garrison, and the Mammoth have scored two straight. Bushi, small, Schreiber, power play look, Matthews. Bushi, Crickston scores! Chris Bushi continues his hot play and gives Toronto the lead. Craig on to Wardle. Right down Main Street, McLaughlin scores. What a pass from Wardle, and McLaughlin makes no mistake to tie it up for Colorado. They're well. That was Brad Cree, I believe, deflecting that one away. Now a low ball, they score. Not much room to work, but Gibson will find a hole. Matthews moves, swims, dishes. Dowick couldn't go up to get it. Linda the save, tucks it in! Third of the game is a beauty from Dan Lindner. Both goaltenders. In a groove, Small trying to change that stop ward. Rebound, oh, what a goal! Zach Kearney, put that in your highlight reel. Schreiber steps out, shoots, scores! Doesn't it mark you a little bit funny that the two smallest guys on the rock are the two guys going inside? Dan Lindner and Zach Kearney, both with great goals. You know, that's counts for four of those goals. His inside right there. And Chris Bushy off to the side with a quick stick, you know, doing the Corey Small thing from the other side. So um, very, very strange games of runs. Uh, it looked like uh, Toronto was going to run away with this thing, uh, getting out to a 4 nothing lead in the first. Um, they uh, They took it right from the beginning. Uh, Dan Lintner, uh, just a minute and 45 seconds in uh, scoring. And then uh, a lot of back and forth. It was a track meet, both teams. And transition, uh, of course, with Joey Capito there. He got a goal in this game, but they tried this time and time and time again. And Nick Rose was stellar. There were a number of saves that I just had to look at the replays going, what the, how in the, did he, did he make that save? using everything, shoulders, helmets, stick, whatever, getting anything in the way of these things, and diving 
for a big man diving back and forth. Really, really spectacular stuff. Come into the second, and Toronto takes a penalty, and Colorado make them pay. We've been talking about this already before. Eli McLaughlin uh, with a power play goal, followed by Tyler Garrison just seconds later. Uh, uh, bang. Bang. We're uh, we're to two. Uh, Jordan Gillies makes it three. Joey Capito off a long lead pass from Dylan Ward, and he made no mistake, and we were tied. Uh, we talked about the Chris Bushy uh, quick stick um, with just uh, just under five minutes left in the second um, on the power play, and Toronto went up 5-4 going into the half. Coming out of the half, and again, Colorado gets a quick start. Eli McLaughlin with another. Uh, Tyson Gibson over with a power play goal, and they're ahead 6-5, and the first Ontario center is sitting there scratching their head going, it's not supposed to be this close. It just isn't. <laughs> Dan Craig gets them on their feet, 6-6. Uh, six, six. Tyson Gibson again off of Zed Williams' feed. Zed Williams quietly, and didn't get a lot of points, but quietly was doing his thing. You know, big body, moving people out of the way. Um and creating a lot of havoc because you know what kind of shot he's got. So he creates a lot of attention. Then, of course, we saw the Dan Littner goal from the inside diving across the crease. It was actually reviewed, and it was deemed a good goal. Uh, he wasn't anywhere near the crease. We go into the fourth, and it's all Toronto. Now, interestingly enough, and this doesn't show up in the stats, uh, I was messaging back and forth with uh, Guido Catoni uh, around the uh, the end of the third talking about the Toronto defense not looking as good as, as they have a little bit uh, confused in spots and, you know, making Rosie uh, make a lot of saves that uh, he normally wouldn't have to. Well, doesn't uh, Bruce Codd uh, have a little meeting with his defensive core between the third and fourth? And what happens? They shut down Colorado to no goals in the fourth. They got on the same All page. Difference. <laughs> yeah. But that's a, that's a coach who knows how to coach. And knows what it takes to get everybody back on the same page because it wasn't a screen fest. It wasn't you know this. he just had his he had his iPad out and he was you know discussing a few things with the core, and everybody was in the meeting for two minutes, three minutes, and bang, they get back and they are completely a different defensive core, you know the rock defensive core that we're used to seeing, and nobody was getting through. Uh, we saw the the Kearney. Uh, goal, which was just a howitzer from up front. Ward really had no chance. Uh, we had a couple of uh, couple of wild goals in there. Mitch Desnew and Chris Weir both in transition, getting goals. Tom Schreiber with it with another uh, beauty in the uh, in the fourth. The goal that he got in the first was a I would say a lucky one. Uh, it was uh, one that Ward had saved, but the momentum kept it squirting, and off it went. Um, Mark Matthews with another uh, beauty with a couple of minutes to go in the game, and that sealed it. And Toronto comes up with the big victory. Um, a couple of uh, couple of notes here. Uh, TD Erlin went to town. Faceoffs, we're talking about them, <clears throat> 20 to 4. Uh, any uh, question about how good he is? Yeah. <laughs> now, Toronto didn't do well on the power play. They only went one for four. But, uh, you know, if that was working like it normally is, this game's even further away. The one thing that stood out to me is there was nobody on the Colorado offense, defense, or anywhere else that got more than two points in this game. Nobody. Connor Robinson, two assists. Capito, one goal. Um, McLaughlin, two goals. Gibson, two goals. Garrison, one goal. Brett Craig, two assists. That's it. You're not winning any games when you only have seven goals. And a couple of them are from transition. I don't care who you have in that. You can have Ward. You can have Del Bianco. You can have Elliot all together. And you're still not winning if you're only scoring seven goals. Simple. Uh, for Toronto. And, and they were, they were short uh, Connor Kelly, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So. Uh, Again, in Toronto, you know, Mark Matthews, up until two minutes left in the game, hadn't scored, but he had six assists. Doing what you got to do. Dan Lindner with three right. goals. Schreiber, two goals, four assists. Chris Bushy with a goal, three assists. Corey Small didn't score, but three assists. 
and doing the small things. Josh Dalwick with another big game, setting picks and a goal and an assist. And the goal, again, was another outside howitzer. He's got this low to low or sidearm to low shot that just finds the uh, far corner and just alludes to the toe of the goalie. And he's got such good accuracy. It's a, you know, I've I've known him since he was a, a little kid sitting across the aisle from me. So it's great to, you know, vicariously watch him as an LLR. <laughs> it's just, it's just fun. You know, and it'll be fun watching his brothers too when they, uh, when they come up. But uh, yeah, The Rock put together another uh, thing. Thank you. Very good. Thank you to have, have you with us, Eddie. It's great to have you with us. Appreciate you tuning in. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> they're just so good is right. So good. And, I, I, and, you know, I guess bouncing to the other side now with, with Colorado, I, I you know, I, I think it's pretty clear that something you know, has to happen. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, the trade deadline's only two days away now. So, uh, you know, I think the question becomes, uh, you know, who do they who sell? And for what? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and how do they retool to kind of get back to to where they were two years ago? Well, Mike, we got a treat. We, we got do. a treat. Oh, we do. <laughs> my man. My man. That has made it from the Wells Fargo, the bowels of hell for him. And uh, he, is, uh, he has made it uh, to us. Uh, are you intact? Are you all in one piece? Uh, I think so. I, I feel like I need to be like the Wizard of Oz movie, and, and uh, I feel like the monkey you know, fly like, just ripped me apart. You know, it just I, I feel that's how I feel inside, just empty, empty right now. And what happened is in Fel- Wells Fargo Center, I just felt like every Wings fan, every Philadelphian that was down there supporting their Philadelphia Wings, uh, are just lost for words. They, I, I felt like everyone knew the season was on the line. I felt like. If you would have got a just a win today, would have put you in, in a much happier and pleasant spot of where you're at now. But unfortunately, I, I think Panther said he just came on that much more of an edge, that much more hungrier. Um, and well, listen, let's, let's, credit to this. Yeah, well, credit we, to this. Before we get rolling with your uh, your take, we're gonna uh, well again, the mm-hmm. made 48 stops. Malcolm scores a hat trick. Uh, for a dramatic overtime win. We're going to show the highlights first, Pat, and then uh, we're going to get your take on it just to get a little different uh, different feel on this so uh, everybody knows exactly what you are. Uh, <laughs> He's like, can we not roll the clip, through. please? <laughs> I just lived it. <laughs> so if you uh, if you need to go get a beverage at this time, this is probably a good time to get your fridge. Come back in a couple of minutes. Crawford may be missing. And here's Will Malcolm, who's right behind Crawford in the overall scoring, and he gets the first goal of the day. Will Malcolm bounces home his 25th of the year. Now with Callum Crawford out of the lineup, look for number four to start the offense and make things happen. Quick over the top shot, beats Zach Higgins down low. Jonathan Donville firing one in. Are ruling the roost right now. Here's Malcolm with a shot that was deflected wide. Dunk attempt over the crossbar and in. What an effort by Ryan Sheridan. New shot clock here for the Wings as they get set up. Katoni behind the back, quick stick, Reardon scores! Blaze Reardon on the power play! Ever to have 14 points in a game twice in his career. Here's Donville dishing it off. Here's a shot, they score! To the net, Caputo finds some room behind Higgins. Look at him, you think he's a 280 pounder, 310 pounder, like some of the other goaltenders in the league. But there's a goal by Malcolm. Will Malcolm with his second of the game and found the ball. Now Clark gets it back. Fresh 30 up. Clark shot, save, rebound, score! Sam LeClaire! Shot wide, but it comes off the boards to Reza Terrence clean. Here's Reza Terrence to the net. Save made, rebounds, and they score! And it's Gatoni again! It really propelled them here to get to a tie game in the fourth quarter. Well, we'll see if that rebound strategy continues here. Is again, that seems to be how the Wings figured out how to solve 
the mood, but right off the hop here, Panther City gets one off the opening face off their city as they had a mishap in the wrong spot on the floor. And here's a shot stopped by the mood. Quickly off the bench was LeClaire. And the mood again up to the task. Now the other way. Here's Pompville with a shot. He scores. Jonathan Donville. Our officials will get to that as Donville's got it. Puts it down low. A shot. Sheridan scores. And Panther City has answered. This is where Ben McIntosh is so dangerous behind the net. That's where he's set up right now. Reza Tarrant scores. Joe Reza Tarrant. 14 to shoot. Wings will start. Higgins is headed to back to his goal crease. They score. On the floor. Pulled free by Panther City. They're the closest to it. It's picked up. It's lost. Rowlett back after it. Here's a chance save made by Higgins on Tyler Burton. Brown. Left side in front. Knox. Save made. Rebound loose. They score. It's Phil Caputo in front. <laughs> oh, that left. You can't take it. I'm telling you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can't blame that one on Higgins, man. He was left hung out to dry with that rebound. And Caputo put in the winner uh, and deked him out of his shorts. My God. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. again, I, I brought this up last week. Is Philly of early in the season, uh, they would have crumbled in that fourth. This Philly game, this Philly team, uh, actually, this Philly team actually was able to um, – no, take it no more. I couldn't take it. No, it's. I got to give Ben McIntosh his due. I mean, he had a hat trick again. Uh, same in LeClaire. Looks like he's starting to find himself more and more to the net. Holen Katoni had a great, great game today. Uh, being a facilitator, a playmaker, uh, find the back in that as well with one goal, but he had four assists. Uh, just him and Joe Russell Russell Terrence just just with a nice nice little uh little <laughs> yes uh they, they had a nice little game together a nice little chemistry late in the fourth uh, but I mean there was just periods of uh, stretches where this team was just ice cold though and that's what hurt them I mean on both sides of the uh, ball I mean defense they looked like they were just leaving guys wide open for the Panther City just to unload on and then you had um. On the offensive side of the ball, they couldn't find the back in the net. I mean, so uh, it just left the head scratching. So I mean, uh, yeah, it's unfortunately that's the that's the way it just happened it tonight. Is. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we were just talking as you were as you were coming back. You know, uh, uh, you know, certainly one one bright spot was you know the resolve they showed at the end of the second and at the end of the fourth. You know, with those flurries to 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 get back into the game and. and and yeah, I'll, I'll definitely. I'll agree with uh, that one too. I, I, no I will, I will agree with that. I, I, I think, I think he did. I felt like he got banged up a bit in the second half, and just kind of wasn't, wasn't kind of getting around the, the way we're we're used to seeing. But he had no points in the first half either. So like he he only got a point at the very end. So he needs mm -hmm. to be. Um, like, like Pat said many times, the facilitator. If he's not scoring, he needs to be in. He needs to be the quarterback. He needs yeah. to be able to get that thing moving and get everybody set up for where they need to be. He's the one who's going to feed Russell Terrence. He's the one who's going to feed Katoni, either Katoni. And, uh, you know, if he's not doing that, then uh, they're going to be suffering and not getting a whole lot of points. Uh, by the way, I, I was talking with – I mentioned to you, Mike, I was talking with Guido Katoni uh, yesterday. So today is his birthday, and I was ho hoping – for him, that uh, his boys would uh, you know, gift him a win uh, today, and uh, well, I guess they're gonna have to go with a bottle instead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it was it was pretty bad, and uh, now the big question is, forty eight hours from now, and you know, just with the body language I seen from Paul Day today, it, it just looked like um, that was the season. Um, and, and like I said, I'm. Yeah, so I, I wonder if there's going to be a – I'm not going to say there's going to be a significant change within the next 48 hours 
or or what's going to happen with this team moving forward? I mean, uh, I, I kind of asked the question at the end of the interview. I said, you, are, are you guys thinking there's going to be, you know, some kind of movement or something? And they said, that's up to the management right now. So, uh, I mean, because I feel like this team's kind of underachieved for what they, for what it looked like on paper. So, um, but, you know, only Paul Day can answer those kind of questions. And I'm curious to know what's going to go through his mind, like I said, in the next 48 hours. It's the question now is because we've talked about the defense forever. This wasn't the yeah. defense. This was an offensive uh, lapse. There was no offense for the longest time for big chunks of this game. And then, like uh, like Brian had mentioned there, bad shot selections, uh, early in the clocks, uh, doing all the things that you're told not to, and everybody's trying to do too much. You know, everybody. Yeah. Kind of learn. It's not a team effort. So somebody has to rein it in. Is it coaching? Is it players not listening to coaching? Because we know Jeff McComb, he's he's a he's a great coach offensively. So for them not to pick up on it with the talent that they have, um, I'm I'm a little bit at a, at, a, at a loss on this one. Same thing with Paul Day, very successful throughout uh, NLL and MSL as well as Man, very successful. And for some reason, it's just not working. So something has to happen. He made big changes last year for the better, and now things are Peter are flatlining again. So what has well, to happen? Yeah, well, and I I'm say that that schedule's looking a little more daunting now than it did, <laughs> you know, in the wake of this loss. You know, you're looking at at Georgia, then you've got mm-hmm. Vancouver and Saskatchewan both at home. The Saskatchewan game in particular uh, is kind of a uh, a boon for them because you know they. They're, they're catching Saskatchewan in the middle of that five games and 15 days stretch that they have, you know, but then they host Buffalo that same weekend. So they get three straight after the Georgia game, but you know, that, that, that Buffalo game will also be a double header weekend for Philly. So Thursday, mm-hmm. Thursday Saturday, I think. So, and then, mm-hmm. then you're finishing with three away games at Panther city, at Colorado, at mm-hmm. Rochester. So, and two of those three are really difficult. tough games. So yeah, it's looking a little more difficult than it did a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, and, and and when you look at it too, and just remember, you only have one win at home. And again, it just and, and Gary, like you said, um, and it kind of puzzled my mind. I think Paul Day is a great GM, but the coaching, if you feel like the team is not listening to your message, and then there has to be some kind of change at some point, unless I mean. Maybe you just got to face that in the mirror. I mean, like I said, maybe it's not him. Maybe it's the offensive coordinator or defense, something. But something needs to change if the message is not getting across to the players. And, again, um, just like I said, some, you know, when I saw during the stretches of guys just not be able to find the back in that defense, leaving guys getting wide open. And I get the set screens and all those things. But there's times I find, that, you know, Panther City, they were just wide open, getting picking their shots. And – Unfortunately, for the Philadelphia Wings, it's just, again, another shortcoming at home. Granted, I got to give Higgins his due, and I know this sounds crazy, two weeks in a row, but I think the man, my man listens to this podcast. I think he wants to hit me with a ball. But, no, uh, I, I think he did a I phenomenal saw those job. There. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I think he does do a, a – it did do a phenomenal job again today. It's just uh, the defense in front of him when he are leaving wide-open shots, it leaves that one-on-one. And today – I got to give the credit, you know, his due. He stopped a lot of breakaway goals today, which could have been uh, really, really scary. But, no, he stopped a lot. So, I got to give him his due there. Like I said, it's just unfortunately there was just uh, mayhem on both sides. But mostly your offense is supposed to be this high, you know, offensive scoring juggernaut. I think it's kind of watered down now. Yeah. Yeah, because just looking yeah. at the shots, right, you're looking at Jonathan Donville at 11 shots. He had two goals. That's uh, – Pretty good. Those, those are those are quality shots. He doesn't take two weeks. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Mo, Mo Malcolm. You know, three goals, but he had ten shots. Yeah, and that was so, something that I commented during the game. You know that that both teams were getting a lot of high quality looks early on. Yeah, and, and and both goalies were standing tall. You know, keep keeping it a, a low scoring affair. But you know, go going back to what Pat's saying about you know the next forty eight hours. Um, I got to wonder, I got to wonder if you kind of go with a little bit of a hybrid here with your strategy 
You know, I, I, I'm, I'm just not convinced. I'm not convinced that they're just outright sellers yet. The same way I would be with, uh, with say Colorado. You know, I, I, I think it's safe. I think it's safe for any of us to say right now, Colorado is is a definite seller at the trade deadline. Mm-hmm. That they don't see themselves. You know, I mean, they're four and nine. You know, we've been talking all all season that that nine and nine is probably you know going to be a, at, at a minimum what you need to to make a playoff spot. And there's there's a possibility that nine and nine does not get you in the playoffs. Still, um, right. you know, and it doesn't look that way right now because there's a couple of teams that are in playoff spots right now, like New York, that are sub five hundred, but. You know, there's still a decent amount of season left to go. And, Absolutely. And, and, and you know, and, and uh, you know, I guess the last thing I would add is, you know, um, sometimes all it takes is one or two moves. And, and I would use Colorado 2022 as an example. They, they, made, they, made the tr- they made the trade with Philly for Anthony Jokum. They made the trade with New York for Tyson Gibson. And uh, and uh, sending Ranjan back in return, and you know it's paying dividend. It's kind of paid dividends for both teams. You know, short term. Well, just to look Colorado. at the uh, the Mitch Mitch Jones. Just look at that move last year, and that put Philly on fire. It was a little bit too late for them to do anything with it. But yeah, it was a lot of hope. And really, you get one impact so, player. Yeah, so uh, you know, it, it's it's you know I. I I would just caution against selling the farm. With Colorado, it's a different story. I would caution against like, Philly doing it the same way I would caution against the uh, you know, team like. Well, New York, they don't need to buy. They don't need to uh, face lift for the fifth time. They have all the pieces there. They they don't and, and don't forget that New York has Colorado because of that Gibson trade. New York has Colorado's first round pick. So the, mm-hmm. the worse, you know, the farther down the ladder Colorado moves, the higher that pick gets for New York. So that, that's going to pay double dividends for them in the end, you know, in addition to, to having Ron John on the team from that trade. So, all right. Well done. Yeah. The, yeah. Well, no, I mean, it's like, like, to, to, like to Mike, to, with your point, uh, when I look at this team, though, like you got to remember, like Rochester's starting to catch fire again. Uh, again, they took care of Panther City, which caused Panther City to go into, look, this is, you know, a lot of these teams are, I, I got to win now mode. And in order for, to me, to believe this Philly, that, that Philly has any kind of chance of, you know, catching the NLL by storm is that they have to, Again, you have to go in your old decks, and I don't know how much more you can go as far as drafts and all that stuff or making some kind of significant pull of trying to do something here because I think right now you have too many teams fighting even fighting for that last wild card spot, uh, that last AC spot. So, I mean, like I said, Rod, you know, Rochester's hanging in there, Panther City's hanging in there, um, and so forth. I mean, I mean, look, can the Wings, obviously, again, you still have a little bit more time, but now it's, again – just from the by language I've got from the team or what I look to me is just look like uh, we're going to have to hope for a prayer for us to get into the dance. And that's what it looks like to me. All right. And it, Pat, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. As always. Uh, very, very, yeah, I know you've had a long day, um, but uh, Heart ripped we, out appreciate, right we appreciate everything you do for us and for the wings and, uh, uh, absolutely. I just, just felt like I went into a Mortal Kombat mode and my heart's just been ripped out my chest here. So, yeah, my, my heart, yeah, that's just going to go back to my quiet place. I'll go cry to myself just for one more week. And then I got to get ready for five more, three more days. And what? <laughs> and one week I have to get ready for, no, 10 days, four games. I'll be crying for four straight days. So, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. something like that. My math is all wrong. But anyway, guys, you guys have your great night. Guys, always catch uh, all across all the time. And this is for all your information. I've, Talked you guys up a storm today up in that press box with Mr. Adam <laughs> Levi and so forth. So, and a lot of the Panther City guys I got to meet today. So, uh, guys, make Excellent. sure you guys check out all awesome. across all the time, man. You guys are awesome. 
Uh, I'm just a dope just trying to hold on to the coattail of this show before my team lets me go into the dark again. But guys, have a good one. My heart. Uh, thanks, Pat. And I was Pat with the uh, with the wings test. Oh man, yeah, man, where's his heart? You on know, the and the, the, just one other thing I would add. You know, um, yeah, they're at Georgia. Yeah, Georgia's hot. They're on that home stand, but um, you know, over the last couple of years, that's been one of the fiercest rivalries in oh, the NFL. Cool. Oh, I, I think I, you know, I think they've played. Uh, I've lost track, but I think they've played about six or seven straight one goal games. Hmm. I wasn't able to get the uh, wasn't able to get the, the uh, pickums with Pat. I was hoping to oh. pull that one off. <laughs> My goodness, uh, uh, you'll see him. Hey, he did a great hey, job. So take a look at that. He did great. I uh, I went perfect this week, y'all. <laughs> Eduardo's been waiting for this since minute He's one. Been Oh, yeah. Podcast, so <laughs> Eduardo went seven and one. I went eight and zero. Oh. Uh, it's about time, you know. I've been the other way for for a few of those <laughs> weeks. So if you look at that log gem that we have year to date. Sean's still in the lead, fifty six and thirty six. Pat is right behind him at fifty five and thirty seven. Eduardo is right behind Pat at fifty four and thirty eight, and I am right behind all of them at fifty three and thirty nine. Mike is still making his way. His New Year's chilling, resolution chilling was to get over 500. Basement. So he, he's, still in, <laughs> he's still in striking grasp on that one. But, uh, yeah, this is a, a log jam and a half. Uh, no one can yeah. slip up a week because uh, someone's going ahead. Yeah, hey, yeah hey, well. I mean, my, my, my three and five could have been six and two. It could have. Uh, three I, overtime I, losses. I, I, I lost three overtime games. So, And like I said before, that's usually me that loses those overtime ones. So uh, something was right here. Well, look at that. Here he was cooking. Yes, yes, he was. So they're me into a wrestling promo. <laughs> Anyways, let's get on ourselves over. We talked about New York. Let's get on to the New York Vegas game. Sundown sock trick, best Jackson's big nights. Uh, four goals and three assists as Riptide hold on for the home win. My God, this was a uh, a game that was just, you, you thought it was over, and then it was like, wait, there's more. Let's take a look at the highlights and we'll get back with our talk. This left side, and there's a beautiful dime by Jeff T over to that wick side. And it is Matisse who gets on the sheet and has the equalizer level at one. And get him the ball and let him shoot the rock. He just missed that one, but get him five shots on this power play. I think he scores, and oh my goodness. And it's Teat with the shorthanded goal for New York. And Teat gets on the board thanks to the special teams. And a beautiful find down low for the Riptide. And then face off with about 11 seconds left. Went down, Zach Greer made a beautiful play, scored with three seconds left to bring him to championship. And there is a dunk goal from sundown. That's it. And obviously you're not rooting, just to put a big end on that uh, Duke story, Greer, you're not rooting for uh, Duke against Carolina tonight. There's a goal behind the net by Casey Jackson. Much needed for Vegas. Had the first goal tonight. They snapped the 5 nothing run from New York thanks to Jackson's goal, his 22nd of the season. Still a man up in the situation here. The shot is in with Dunkerley out for the riptide. The dunk is good here for New York. And it's a 6-2 game been great also in the loose ball pursuits when he's played too. Here's Teets, good step over, the outside shot, there's number two tonight for Teets, who leads the NLL in goal score. Battle Hall of Famer as well, 4v4, Kiernan just misses, scooped up by Hall, there's the long outlet to the aforementioned, cursed here, he scores, 4v4, diving to the turf. In the third, but Vegas got to credit the Desert Dogs, trying to look for Win number five, they drop three of the last four. The dunk is in. It's Casey Jackson. That's number four, like in the footsteps of Sundown, and Jackson delivers here at the barn. And penalties that were undisciplined, but is aware of that and cognizant of that and is wants to make that change. And that's been huge <laughs> as Cars Larson Sundown with his sixth goal. Get your socks ready, Dave. Where Hannah's made a move, I'd like to see him just get his hands free and let it rip. And they want him to take matters into his own hands, and he does, Mitch. You're spot on, and you called for it for Hannah, who gets another tonight down to a three-goal game. Lead. And there it was, Mike. Yeah. Uh, 
and uh, you, know, you know, almost uh, almost another overtime game. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, Vegas had a little bit of a breakdown at the end. Uh, I think it was Dylan Watson who had fallen into the crease, and uh, Zach Greer had the ball on the left hand side, uh, waited for Watson to get out of the crease, and then tried to feed Watson. Uh, there was another Vegas player in the area behind him, but uh, just the miscommunication with I think Watson knowing that. Uh, that he couldn't touch the ball. Otherwise it would have been a change of possession with about 10 seconds left. And then now, of course net. on, on the pickums, my, my only comment there was two words, Jeff T. <laughs> and of course the team goes as T goes, but Larson sundown had a hell of a game. Yeah. Yeah. Six goals and an assist. So uh, <laughs> as you saw on the highlights, three of them uh, via the dunk. So <laughs> uh, I was, I swore. That uh, well, at the halftime when I saw the score at seven two, that this thing was going to be just an absolute uh, cakewalk. But uh, to uh, Vegas's credit, uh, they didn't give up. They kept fighting. You got guys like Jack Hanna and Rob Hellier that are going to make sure that this thing stays in Casey Jackson. Uh, they're going to make sure that this thing stays on track, and they're what's going to get this thing rolling with uh, whatever picks come along uh, in the next. Uh, next draft and whatever they do at the trade deadline for moving forward. Absolutely. And, and, and they really, they really have been a better road team this year than, than they have been at home. So uh, just kind of showing, showing that side of them that, you know, that they can go into other people's barns and, and try mm -hmm. to steal a victory. So now, my only hope is that they don't get rid of any of these guys at the trade deadline towards uh, getting younger or getting other pieces or getting other draft picks because I think they're essential. And taking a look down this, the stretch there, what brought it within a goal was Hannah Jackson and Hellier back to back to back. And with five minutes left, it was a one goal game. So there was plenty of opportunity to so steal this thing, even though it looked like it looked like a whitewash at the half. Absolutely. So, yeah, I, I, I don't get the sense be, because they're young in terms of, you know, <laughs> this is only their second season and, and Sean Williams is trying to, to, to kind of build and, and find, find his core. I, I, I can't see too much in the way of selling, um, you know, and, and if they do, I mean, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. It's I'm just not so sure. It's wise for them to sell uh, veterans, right? You got a guy like Reed Reinhold, who uh, again didn't play, um, taking up a spot. Is it time for him to just to move on? I, I have him on my other show uh, this coming Thursday, and uh, we'll be talking about um, the lack of playing time here. And is this you know busy with NLLPA, busy with his law firm outside of lacrosse? Um, or is it just not fitting into what Williams wants to do? I find that hard to believe because he's a hell of a player. I watched him in Toronto for years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I guess how much does the, the West Coast factor in with him? Well, he's in Vancouver. Right? Out west. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm a cer certainly that's a piece. I, I would think that's an intriguing piece for anyone who, who needs maybe some lefty depth on the front end going into the playoffs. Um, Does Calgary look at something like that? That's a good question. Um, you know, they just reactivated Logan Schuss. So I'm so tempted to Two weeks ago would probably be a better answer. Yeah, so you know, I'm tempted to say no. You know, he I mean, he had a couple of assists in the Georgia game. So, um, you know, obviously great to see him back on the floor finally again. But uh But for a young team, they're me. long in the tooth in some respects because Zach Greer, Reinhold, Tor Reinhold as well as getting up there now as you know, he's not the young guy he was in Saskatchewan. True, true. Hell you're you know, Jacob well. Rue, Casey Jackson. Um, you know, Rob Hellier, um, they're, they're, they're long in the tooth for a very young team. So then let me posit this. What about Charlie Bertrand? 
again, yeah. not playing, right? So yeah. Um, so maybe there are pieces you can package and <laughs> well, it won't affect them any because they're not there in the lineup, right? So I need to speculate on this. Look at the chemistry with Albany. Yeah, you have Dyson Williams waiting, but you know, you know his father wants him to be on the team with. That's an expensive move, though. It, 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 it yes, it is. It is uh, certainly. I, you know, I would still, I would still say it's not what we talked about a month ago when we, you know, had the little phony phone call with Rich Lisk and Kurt Styers about Jeff T. You know, right? Graham Hasek and you know, another lefty and a few picks and Max Wilson and you know, whatever it took for Halifax to get a hold of Jeff T. Um, I don't think this would quite be on that level considering that, you know, I mean, you have to consider Dyson Williams hasn't stepped on an NLL floor yet. Um, we know the talent is there, but if you're Glenn Clark, do you really want to disrupt that momentum? It's, 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 it's going to be a very difficult I think it's going to be a very difficult balancing act in the off season for Glenn Clark. Well, it's also, you have, you have, you have this generational, goal, right? you, you, you have someone who is being tapped as a generational talent that has not yet stepped on the floor and could be walking, could, okay, realistically, could be walking into a defending championship situation. And you won that championship without Dyson Williams on the floor. And you have, you know, a, a core offensive unit that has shown unbelievable chemistry, fearlessness. It, whew, that, 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 is, that, that is not an easy decision to make. Interesting. It's it's going to be a very intriguing. Yeah, and, and 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 that's not to say that you're not going to ask for a lot in return, right? But that 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 is a big big gamble, right? <laughs> and you'll right. have 48 hours to figure it. Out. <laughs> well, I'm sure it's already in motion if it is. But uh, let's move on because we got a couple more games to go, and I also want to talk about some of the uh, the tie breaks uh, and the scenarios there before we uh, call it a week. Uh, we have our next one, which is Rochester Albany, and if it's an upset of the week, um, Albany's on the back half of the of the home and home uh, of the uh, two games for the weekend. And um, huge nights from Fields, Smith, and Lansbury, which propel the uh, the Nighthawks to a home win. I've been saying this forever that Rochester was going to right the ship. I've also been saying forever that they are one of the highest scoring teams, even when they were losing, that uh, you can't sleep on them, and that this would be a, a tough game for Albany, which is why I picked Rochester to win this thing. And, uh, well, I look like a genius for but a minute, you know, <laughs> and then reality will set back in. We'll see that. Uh, I did pick Rochester, too. There you go. My, that was one of my wins. Now, if I would have picked this one this <laughs> on that, that 365 card, um, it would have gone from a, a couple of hundred to a couple of grand. That I would have made so, um, uh, silly me, you know. Still, you know, you can't look at a few hundred in the uh, and go, mm, that's too bad, but uh, yeah, it could have been a whole lot more, anyways. Let's look at the highlights. Fat in front, wide open, the bouncer, he scores. Waters low shots on him and squeaking him by that time, he dropped quickly and was able to smother that ball. Field scores, and that's his third. The team's going to get Dyson Williams next year, the number one draft pick from last September. So this offense, believe it or not, is going to get even better. And the dunk from behind. Murray over to Smith. Smith picks it up. Back Lanchbury. Feeds it across. He scores. Tic-tac-toe. And McConvey buries it. Still looking in front. Kurtz. Gives it over on the far side. Fed back across the shot. He scores, and the two rookies hook up for that one. If there's any year that you'd have co-rookies, it would be these two guys. Walker 
Trying to tie things up, and he does. We're tied at eight. They come in with the worst penalty kill against the worst power play. Over now to Paulus. Fed in front, the shot he scores. Firth. Connor Fields. Near side to Smith. Smith driving through, shooting, he scores! Ryan Smith. That. Over now to Fields. Fields, driving, Fields, scores! Simmons, watched there by Witte. Shot clock is down to six. Takes it in on goal, the shot, he scores! to get that possession advantage. Up top to Smith. Shooting scores! Ryan Smith! Fields eyeing up. Jamison still has it. Fields looking. Shooting scores! Feeds it down low, grabbed there by McConvey, over to Fields, up top to Smith. Shooting scores! Ryan Smith! Now to Lanchbury. Lanchbury feeds it to Smith, scores! Ryan Smith! Your wing, Lanchbury trying to get free. Lanchbury spinning, still has a flip pass in front, scores! What to Connor Fields. He'll hand it off to Smith, now to Lanchbury. Fed in front, he scores! McConvey! Lanchbury over to Fields. Connor Fields driving, in on goal, scores! Connor Fields with a sock trick. Now we talk about Fields, we talk about Smith. We don't talk about McConvey. I love this kid. I think he is going to be just an absolute stellar Mark Matthews kind of player in this league. Um, he's big. He's strong. He's got good hands. He's got good goal sense. He makes plays. I think that he is really on track. You know, he's only had half of one year, a little more than half of one year. Uh, I think he's going to be just an absolute standout over his career in the NLL if he stays healthy. Now, we talked about Mike um, Faceoffs. It's been really our uh, our big thing here all, all night long, uh, every game, and talking about that. Well, it's pretty lopsided in this one, too. Uh, Nardella won 26 to 7, but yet Rochester comes away with an 18 12 win. Albany also outshoots Rochester 64 to 51, but yet we're talking about an 18 12 victory for Rochester. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 I would also note when you saw the highlights. I mean, halfway through the third quarter it was ten ten. Yeah. So you know, it's not like uh, it's not like Rochester just kind of you know dominated from the start. So it was uh, you know, yeah, you could say Albany. You know, that's the point maybe where Albany ran out of gas. Um, I kind of felt like the turning point was that you know that Fields goal that put him up twelve ten, where you know he. Did a few dodges and just that waters the goal was corner. something else too. That last so. flip to waters and then in just just amazing. Yeah. But you know we're we're gonna again uh, not talk about Hutchcraft. He faced sixty four shots. Easily, yeah. this could have gone the other way. Absolutely. So for all the flack he's taken for sometimes not being in a position, whatever, I think uh, you know this is the Riley Hutchcraft that I knew uh, in Mimico. You know, yeah. it's just taking it by the horns and riding it and doing everything that he did. He, he gave so much kudos to Nick Rose working behind him uh, and how much he learned and is putting towards his starting um, starting job now. And you can see it. Every week he's just that much more confident. Every week he's just that much more standout-ish, you know, where he's a, a mixture of both because he moves, but he's also a position goalie. So, you know, he's able to do the both. He's reactionary as well as being positioned. So, you know, as he gets more comfortable, look out. Definitely. And, and you know, t 
two-game winning streak after the six-game losing streak after the three-game winning streak to open the season. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and that this that you know this definitely makes uh, next week's uh, next week's back half of the home and home all that much more important. You know, uh, really for both teams. You know, with obviously with Albany dropping the back end of their doubleheader, they're now a game behind Toronto. And, you know, now they have the back half of this home home and home where Rochester has to go to Albany, but, you know, with a chance to climb back to 500. Right. And, and, and you know, really into the playoff picture because, you know, they have a eh, maybe a middle of the road schedule left after that game. They're going to be at Colorado, which, you know, could be. Most but they're one of those before. teams which the other teams are fearing now because they're getting hot at the right time. Yeah, they're going to get Halifax and New York at home. They'll be at Toronto after that and at Georgia, and then they're home against Philly. So and We're going to talk about Halifax in a minute, and uh, again, I, I'm scratching my head about them because for a team that was pegged so high, um, they've come off very mediocre this year and been one another one of those teams where I just – you know, I can't put my finger on why it doesn't work week in and week out. But uh, I think I can. <laughs> Has to do with the little, uh, small little box within a box. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, Stas four goals, leads the way for the Seals in the home win over the Thunderbirds. But again, eight goals are going to win you nothing. Nothing. I don't care who you're going against. You go against Vancouver, and eight goals is not going to win that game. So um, let's look at the highlights, and uh, let's see where we uh, we are in this one. They have some advantages defensively. Toby buries it in the top corner off a beautiful pick from Trey LeClaire, and San Diego ties it at one. Pass right there. Woods here at the end of the shot clock. Puts it in near side around O'Riglieri with Gobrecht all over his back. Is it on the Dunbar? Trying to get underneath on Pearson. Has to work it to Stotts who steps into one. Put back attempt goes for San Diego. It's Jake Govett on the doorstep. Oh, it seals late getting off the floor and Hill a kick save. We told you at the top of this quarter, it is San Diego's best defensively. And they break down as Peterson, flying off the bench, gets Halifax back within one on his second of the night to Dunbar. Wesley Berg, Stotts comes open, and he stings the corner. Kyle Jackson freed him up, and Austin Stotts has a new career high with 38 goals. All right. Halifax 10 for their last 20 on the PK over the last two and a half games. Doby Dunbar, a carbon copy of the first half as Dunbar has his second. During the break. And we'll see if Rain has the announcer's curse. Here we go. Warren Hill with the save. Big time stop for Warren Hill as Halifax desperately needed that. Now they'll have to go down five on three, but that was huge. Five on three for four minutes and also giving up a penalty shot. But Dolby with a yard sale. He's got a one-on-one -on -one to the net, but slows it down. And Aaron Woods goes flying off of him. Leclerc back to Berg and San Diego makes it 10 to six on a discombobulated sequence culminated with great ball move. Jamison's goal just a couple of minutes ago snapped the 10 to 2 Seals run. And Shanks buries one up high. Back to back goals for the. So, Mike, are you telling me that you give up 12 power plays? That's, uh, that's too many? <laughs> <laughs> We've said this all year. The box within is, the box. They're it's so, the penalty box. They're so prone to taking stupid penalties. And this was just another game in which retaliation. San Diego does this on purpose. They do an awful lot of things to get under your skin. And then, you know, you know, Toronto almost fell into that trap last week. Halifax, hook, line, and sinker. 
fell into this. Yeah, 31 penalty minutes, uh, 12 power plays. San Diego scored on seven of them. So, you know, I mean. That's your game. <laughs> take Yeah, take those goals away, and you've got an 8-6 Halifax win. Big road win. <laughs> One well needed, too. And, you know, this this is needed for San Diego, too, coming off the loss last week to Toronto. But um, this, it's, it's inexcusable when you take a look at that penalty shot when they already had two guys in a box. You know, Warren Hill, you can't blame him. You know, there's yeah. just how many how many things are you going to do? You know, 51 to 40 San Diego shot Halifax. You're only getting 40 shots. That's because you got 12, you know, penalties to kill. Of course, you're not going to be doing anything, you know, offensively. Yeah, and, and you know, the other thing I'll note is that, that this was the middle of that really rough four-game stretch that they had here. They, you know, two weeks ago, they hosted Georgia lost a close one, went to San Diego, lost that. So now they're 0-2 in that four-game stretch. They've got home against Panther City, who just came off a big win. <laughs> let's, right. let's, let's call it for what it is. That That's a big momentum-changing win. They had lost two straight coming into that game, and then they're at Toronto. <laughs> so... You know, uh, it's not out of the realm of possibility to see two weeks from now that Halifax is seven and eight and maybe on the outside of the playoff window looking in. So, and it's too late to do anything <laughs> movement wise yeah. because then after that, Thursday had said it last year in, in, in the off season. This was the year they were going to put it all in, and if not, they're going to have to go and cut away and try something else because this didn't work. Well, it doesn't look yeah. like it's working. And then after that Toronto game. Guess who at Rochester? Mm. So it's uh, white hot at the moment. Uh, yeah. Face off wise, you had that uh, Withers against Baptiste uh, uh, little uh, to do. San Diego edges Halifax thirteen to twelve. You know, it's just like the Erlen thing. Baptiste, you got you got to give him credit, man. He's had two really tough opponents, and he's uh, looked good on both weeks. He had Erlen last week. Now you got uh, Withers this week. That's uh, not easy to uh, come away with uh, both victories on yeah. that. So, yeah. well, uh, it's going to be interesting to take a look. Just before we uh, we uh, move to closing stuff, I want to uh, just jump in here because we're at that stage now where we have to take a look at the tie breaks. Uh, I've had this for a while, and uh, we've not really had to use it. Now, let's take a look. The tie breakers. The, uh, the first one, obviously, is the head-to-head -head winning percentage between tied teams. Second one is uh, when it comes down, if that's still not going to solve it, winning percentage against common opponents played equal number of times. That's, that's a weird one. That's a weird one. Yeah, see, that's, and that's that's where I'm that's where I'm baffled. Why why are they not using series goal differential as the right. next tiebreaker? Why are they not using all of the possible tiebreakers within a two game series between teams to try to resolve something first before going into mm -hmm. the rest of the league, you know, and, and you know, I actually compiled, <laughs> I compiled the list of, of the two game series that are one, one so far to this point. And I've got a number of them, um, Albany, Vegas, Calgary, Philly, Calgary, Toronto, Georgia, Panther City, Georgia, Vancouver, Halifax, and Philly, Las Vegas, and Panther City, New York, and Philly, Saskatchewan, and Vancouver. And, you know, some of those might not sound like they're terribly important, but really, in reality, they all are because whether it's teams fighting for a playoff spot or teams looking to increase um, their standing with respect to the entry draft, that's going to be a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, take a look at some of these. Uh, and, yeah. And, and if you use series goal differential, um, only one of those, uh, what do we have? We have nine series right now, two game series that ended up being split. Only one of them, would go to a third tiebreaker, and that would be Halifax Philly because right. both of those 
were overtime games. So if you'd use series goal differential, you'd already have your answer on eight of these nine scenarios. Well, I think that's what the league's trying for. They're trying not to get down to some of these other ones because some of these things are just, you know, strength of victory, combined win percentage of all teams defeated. Teams defeated multiple times will count the number of times. You know, strength of schedule, that's uh, in the eye of the beholder, right? (laughs) Right, right. Combined win percentage of all teams competed against. Teams competed against multiple times will count the number of times competed against. League-wide goal differential, goals for, goals against. And then if all that fails – it's basically throw your arms up the air and say, we're just going to have a coin toss. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that the league wants it. Uh, if, if these things come down to in uh, A or B, <laughs> they don't want it to go too far down the line because some of that stuff, you're going to have to actually, actually make a call to uh, to NASA to get to some of them to start doing some of the, or MIT to get some of the math going <laughs> and some of these yeah. things. That, Elias Sports Bureau. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll be going with uh, Cooper and, uh, you know, the league, uh, uh, league uh, things there for the uh, the other computer uh, right the lax e- metrics e- uh, <laughs> things there. yeah the, the metrics um, just a reminder to everybody that we are on Facebook we are on Instagram we are on Twitter we are on Thread we are on YouTube please take a look again at our YouTube page it's starting to grow we're starting to get a little more followership I'd like to grow it a little bit bigger uh, we got all kinds of stuff there for you retro games interviews. We have our library of shows. We have press conferences. We have all kinds of things and all kinds of tools to help you uh, further uh, advance your knowledge and your uh, expertise of the box lacrosse and the NLL game, as well as some of the other um, faucets with field, with sixes, and all the other things that are going along with it. And it's only going to grow from there. We'd love to use it as a big tool to help uh, all the other information that we have to get more out there so it doesn't have to just filter right through Facebook only or through the website. We'd love to give you more opportunities and options to look at more stuff to give you a 3D uh, view of everything. So please give it a view, tell your friends about it, let's grow that thing big so we can do all kinds more for it. Uh, please uh, visit our, our Facebook page three, four, five times a day. News is always changing. We have our finger on the pulse of the situation. And this week is going to be very, very busy with the trade deadline yes. and all the other things. To take a look at all the buyers, all the sellers and everything else and the new looks and the facelifts of these teams and how they're going to go in the future. Uh, Mike's got an article uh, coming up for, for uh, the panic button thing. So, yeah, I think it'll be more of a March to May thing. It'll be after the trade deadline and, uh, you know, I'll be outlining the teams that are kind of chasing maybe the final, say, three or four playoff spots, uh, right. what their remaining schedules are. And, I'll you know, I'll be making note of any new wrinkles, <laughs> new new changes in, in their rosters that might Absolutely. help pro- propel a team that's outside the playoff window into the playoffs or keep a team that's just inside the playoff window. Right. Staying inside the playoff window, such as a Buffalo or, you know, uh, or a uh, like a Panther City or a Rochester. Right. Even a Halifax for that matter. Yeah. Um, So (laughs) we uh, we have another busy week ahead of us. Sean will be back with us next week um, to uh, add more uh, more insight to our West Coast. And um, we again, thank you all uh, for your patronage week in, week out. Uh, We love doing this for you. Uh, we thrive on it, and we really, really appreciate all the the positive feedback we've gotten from many of you. I know I talk to a lot of people. I know that Pat's talked to a lot of people as well. Um, it, it's just you know heartwarming that all of our hard work is for good, and uh, we love doing it. And we are going to continue to uh, you know <laughs> I say we work night and day, and it's the truth. You know, it, it's around the clock for us, and uh, um, it's only going to get busier. And we're you know. Looking forward to the MSL seasons around the corner. The WLA seasons around the corner. The PLL season is just around the corner as well, as well as the busiest time of the year for the NLL, as well as playoffs upcoming. So ALL playoffs are coming as well. So I'm looking forward to, you know, jumping in with that as well. So stick with us. Uh, we are here week in, week out with you. And we really do appreciate all of your support. So Mike, any last words? I'll just <laughs> be on the lookout for that article. Uh, it, it will definitely, um, you know, you use it, use it as a tool to, to see 
what 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 path your team has to the playoffs right if any still so right for me personally i am really curious to see what's going to happen by tuesday and see how the new realigned teams uh, are looking and uh, will that be enough to go in something like an albany or a toronto and really uh, give them a run let's see what kind of playoffs uh, we're uh, we're headed for anyways uh, for Sean Slatt, who is uh, traveling uh, this weekend, uh, for Muffler Mike, who is over in Connecticut, I'm Gary Groove in Toronto. Again, thanking you so much for all your patronage and support. And we will see you again next week. Keep your stick in your hands. And we'll see you again next week, Sunday night, 9 o'clock. Until then, have a great week.